all the excitement of the auction action and educational champagne seminars, timeline auctions are not to be missed. I'm Lindsay Gunderson and I'll see you there. Why people collect uh, ancient and antique jewellery, what the benefit is. Um, they're certainly remnants of our collective past and this makes them valuable, certainly within themselves. But when you look at today's modern jewellery, so many modern designers actually draw on influences in terms of their style and designs from the past, paying homage to this bygone era, that only pay homage to the real thing. And it's the real thing that you're going to be seeing in today's auction. They're displayed around the room, the pieces in the glass. You're also going to see them um, each lot up on the board. And if you didn't manage to get one yet, there should be catalogues on each and every seat. So you can have a look at some of the pieces that I'm going to refer to uh, in my seminar today. So when it comes to collecting, of course, we want to appeal to the nostalgia buffs as much as the cutting edge connoisseurs and collectors, which is, of course, you guys, because that's why you've joined us here today. And when it comes to history, most of our collectors are, of course, interested in the historical background of these items. And it's incredible to think that these pieces are true slices of history. And the reason that I particularly am passionate about the jewellery is these pieces were worn, appreciated a couple of thousand years ago, and we get to actually touch them, own them, collect them. And this is another reason that a lot of people collect antique jewellery, is to become an official custodian of these pieces, of these works of art, pieces of history that can never be recreated again, which is of course very important for future generations, whether that be your own future generation or others, to preserve that history and to maintain its value as much as possible. It's also a way in which a lot of people become uh, immortalised, really, in the provenance history. Of course, you as a collector, as an owner, will become documented in that provenance as well. And that's something that really excites people also. Now, when it comes to the craftsmanship and the collectability of the pieces, it's not just about the history. It's not just about the investment. It's also an appreciation of the sheer workmanship, artistry, skill, labour that's gone into a lot of these pieces that you just don't see in modern jewellery anymore. Why? Because it just wouldn't be economically feasible or viable, it just wouldn't make sense. Of course, we're very much a world about trying to get the best bargain, the lowest price in a lot of modern jewellery. Of course, there are uh, exceptions, and mass produced and machine made. When you do get handmade pieces, of course, you will pay top dollar, so to speak, for them, but they don't have that history attached to them. This is the beauty of collecting antique pieces because not only do you have this skill, this labour, uh, which people employed so much time to do in those days because they had no other choice, that's what makes them special and that's what makes them one of a kind, as well as having that history attached to it, which you just can't find with modern jewellery. Which brings me on to the last reason why so many people collect an uh, ancient and antique jewellery is the fact that, of course, a lot of people collect it as a long-term investment. And for those people who do collect it just for that reason and to diversify their portfolio, that's the thing they're most concerned with. But with other people, it's also about this work of art that you can wear, that you can enjoy, that you can own. Um, unlike other artefacts that you can't actually wear on your person, a lot of people um, obviously buy it to wear it and enjoy it as well. Meaning whether the investment value increases or stays the same, you know that your enjoyment of it is guaranteed. So that moves me on to how you form a collection. Um, with Timeline, they generally recommend that you stick to some sort of theme uh, in your collection so that one day if you did want to resell everything, if you've got a coherent group, it's a lot easier. So we usually recommend that you collect over a certain period, for example, Saxon or Roman uh, jewellery or art or artefacts. You might want to sit, stick to a certain type, albeit bracelets or necklaces. You might want to go for certain materials, perhaps just collecting gold or a motif such as only ecclesiastical items or perhaps posy rings, which uh, is what we're going to be starting off with today, which are extremely popular, I know. It's also useful if you have a certain method in your collecting. 
Some people go only for rarity. Now, of course, this always has that collectability attached to it, that scarcity. Um, rarity meaning, of course, if there's a certain item in a certain period that was so rare to be made, of course, it has that lasting value to it. Equally, of course, we've got a few items today whereby gold was in very scarce supply at that time. So to have a piece of gold made in that particular period, which I'll point out when we get to those lots, um, that also adds to the rarity and the collectability of the piece. But some people also go for textbook, traditional and classic examples of that period. Of course, a lot of people go with fashions, a lot of people go with trends. There's a market for collecting that and reselling that as well. Uh, and I'm also going to be pointing out some pieces today that fit that description. Also, we do recommend that you buy the best condition that you can afford, um, the best quality that you can afford, and don't be afraid to upgrade your collection. So to be able to actually resell your less desirable pieces, to maintain your collection, and actually elevate its status in terms of quality and rarity. We also recommend, of course, that you make a note of the date, uh, where and when it was purchased, so that you can add that to your acquisition records and of course very important for the provenance. Uh, last but not least, buy what you like. Uh, once again, a bit like wearing it. If you like it, you know that your enjoyment is guaranteed no matter what. Now, how do you cre create and curate your collection rather, I was gonna say. Um, certainly, of course, your acquisition records are really, really important, uh, but it's also a good idea sort of in computerized format to document Again, where and when you purchase the item, but the period of the piece, the type, the material, the theme, the motif, etc., and keep this safe with your provenance uh, documents and any other supporting documentation safely away in a safe. Um, it's good to take good, clear photographs as soon as you've purchased the item, um, not only for your acquisition records as well, but also, of course, important when you come on to resell the item, if, if, that, if that's what you wish to do, or, of course, for insurance purposes, which is very important. Now, I mentioned, of course, storage briefly. Of course, uh, I don't just tell you, you need to obviously keep the item well secured. Um, it's also important to keep the items in a cool dry place where you don't have temperature fluctuations which could damage or corrode certain pieces or precious metals. Um, on this note you can actually speak to someone, one of our experts in timeline auctions who will advise you on how to best maintain the condition and quality of that particular piece because that's crucial in terms of your investment. Make sure you keep the jewellery pieces in padded containers so they're not going to scratch or hit other metals and others, um, other pieces. Very important also to keep it away from heat, extreme light, um, or temperature changes and any chemicals, of course. And for cleaning, also please do talk to our experts at Timeline Auctions to make sure they can help you, again, maintain the condition. Finally, what to look for in today's auction. Now, we've got some phenomenal pieces today. I am absolutely honoured to be uh, presenting them to you today. Um, and there's some that have actually really stood out to me. So I will share those with you. As I said, they're my personal opinion. You will have your own uh, areas of study. Um, but of course, no matter what you're looking for, condition is paramount. So I will be mentioning, um, as I read out the lots where I can, the condition of each relative item. Of course, if there are items that might have hairline fractures or cracks, I will also point those out as well. Uh, needless to say, this doesn't mean this is a lesser investment for those of you who are all highly experienced in collecting. Depending on the piece, sometimes that sign of usage, wear and tear, actually can add to that sort of romantic and emotional attachment to the piece. Um, and therefore, a lot of people collect them for a great price uh, and can actually still resell them for a good price as well. Again, look for extremes of rarity, textbook examples, the value of the pieces um, from uh, the gold that's used in it to the gemstones. We've got some pieces with sapphires, emeralds, pearls, of course, from certain um, periods where it was very difficult to get and they would have been imported for great distances. Uh, so I will be pointing those out as well. And for those of you who like to buy jewellery to wear it, I'll point out those as well, the very rare wearable pieces. Now, talking about the ones in particular uh, that really stood out to me today, I know some of you got catalogues here. For those of you watching online, uh, you can have a little sneaky peek ahead as to what's coming up today. Um, in excellent fine condition is 719. 
719, if you look in your catalogue, this is the medieval gold belt buckle suite. Now, while of course it was in high fashion to uh, wear such items during those days, in modern times now, you just don't see it. Um, not just collectible for that reason, but also the condition and also the fact that you've got the complete set. You'll notice that they actually are separate pieces. So the fact that we've got just one piece is exciting, but the fact that we've got the whole complete set makes it a very, very important acquisition for somebody today. Equally, lot number 697. 697, that is the medieval seal matrix with Roman priest intaglio. Um, of course, during that time, that era, um, it was common for uh, most men, it was, of course, acceptable for them to wear just a ring, which is why a lot of them went to town with it and wore a ring on nearly every finger and each thumb as well. But jewellery of a higher status or calibre or something different, which is a pendant, as we can see here, would only have been collected and allowed to be uh, worn by those members of royalty, very high ranking status or very high up in the church. Now this one of course would have been owned by a very high ranking member of the church. This is what makes it very collectible, of course the ownership, the provenance here, but also the fact that these types of pendants were also used as seals and something like this, um, the church would often have their institutional uh, seal in order to validate documents, but sometimes the priest would have his very own and something like this would have been worn around his neck to put his own personal stamp on it. Uh, and the inscription on there translates as, I read what you read, signifying this very personal contact uh, with, ever, with whoever he actually sealed the documents with. So that one's really uh, one to look forward to. That's 697. We've also got 703, extremely rare, lot number 703, the Saxon gold and rock crystal teardrop pendant, showing a lot of artistry and workmanship. I mean, outstanding work there by the goldsmiths of that era and the lapidrists, the cutters, gem cutters. Textbook examples, lot, lot number 694. Now, these kind of morning rings, Memento Mori, were extremely popular during that era, but 1728 AD was the height. It can be pinpointed in history as the height of this type of ring. Uh, we've got a lot of interest in this piece already. I'm not surprised because very often uh, we've had a lot of these rings in and the expert was telling me that um, most of them, the enamels just chipped off. The one we've got here today is in extremely fine condition, so it presents a really collectible opportunity for somebody today. In addition to that, uh, 711, lot number 711. Now that is the Etruscan gold leech earrings. Now this is kind of a bit of a hybrid. It's got a lot of rarity to it, but it's also got quite a textbook edge to it. Textbook in the sense that it shows off uh, a technique that the Etruscans were famed for and remembered for, and that was this powder line granulation that they used to do, which you can see beautifully on these earrings. Um, really, they, were, they, were, well, they actually did this without solder, and they were the people who mastered this technique. And even in today's modern day, we've never seen anyone quite to master it to the same level. It's rare because uh, shortly after this period, we saw less and less of this gold ostentation, which the Etruscans loved, just because of the depleting sources of gold. And also it became very fashionable during that time to be buried with their jewelry. And therefore it's really rare to actually to be able to get these pieces, which we have here today. A um, Couple more items I want to point out, very wearable art in terms of modern standards is 704. Now, 704, the Celtic gold band, is one of our oldest pieces in the auction here today, dating around 250 BC to 50 AD, uh, which is incredible, over, almost over 2,000 years old, and it still looks modern and wearable by today's standard. Certainly a piece that stands the test of time. Moving on, 720, another very interesting lot here today, uh, for a similar reason to the priest intaglio. Um, only, these sorts of items would have only been worn by very high ranking members of the church at that time. Um, it wasn't really allowed for the common layman to wear these precious gemstones and jewellery. It's a very important piece here because it has an emerald set in it, a garnet on one side, emeralds on the other, and flanked and surrounded by four genuine pearls. 
For those of you looking for an entry-level piece, if you're a brand new collector, uh, we'll be starting quite low on the Greek Hellenistic Gold Dolphin Intaglio Ring 709. Uh, starting the bids around just under 350 on that one. Um, very significant because actually it was a time where the Greek cultural influence was taking uh, hold and certainly left its mark. Representing the dolphin, which uh, represents um, protection um, at that time, and that is uh, lot number 709, entry level piece. And last but not least, lot number 744. Now that is probably our biggest, most collectible item in my lot of auction here today. Um, this is King Robert the Bruce Seal Matrix Pair. Now, this one's going to be starting out around about just under 80,000. Um, this is an important piece of history for many reasons. Of course, it's very unique, very important, um, and an extremely fine condition. This was commissioned the 10th of July, 1322 AD. And we all know, of course, these types of seals were created to identify the sender with the document, validate the document, and prevent any tampering. And the ones we have today, which is displayed in the box over there, um, was commissioned and produced for the monarch uh, to approve that any taxes and duties would be paid over to the church, to Dunfermline Abbey. So in a way, this was his way of sort of buying himself into heaven, if you like, uh, paying homage to the church, giving his gift and respect. So it was an, a very important seal indeed. And his close connection with the church ran through his whole life to the point that when he passed away, he was buried in the centre of Dunfermline Abbey um, underneath the high altar and his body still remains there today. Very collectible because, of course, there is probably no other figure who was more important in the history of Scottish independence than King Robert the Bruce of Scotland. Of course, this would have been used for his custom, by his customs officials and kept very securely. And as they were used to impress the wax seal on these very important documents, wear and tear would happen. And usually with these kind of seals, once they saw the wear and tear, they would make them obsolete and destroy them. Now, if we had just one of these here today, that would be something pretty special. We've got the matching pair intact. Uh, and as mentioned, that really is sort of the piece de la resistance of today. So we're going to have a quick two minute break and then we will begin the auction. Uh, thank you all for your attention. If you do have any questions at any moment, we've got all the experts of Timeline at the back and we'll start the auction in just a few moments. Thank you. at 3300 to the cell room congratulations Woo! 340 that was very exciting that's what the auction action is all about right lovely it goes at 1900 2100 for 125,000 I'm Lindsay Gunderson reminding you not to miss out on the next timeline auction <laughs>